<laughs> All right, what up, Grilla Grills Nation? How's it going? Try not to laugh. I was laughing at one of Dominic's inappropriate jokes before we got started here. I am super, super, super stoked today, okay, because we have friends with us, okay? We have Fred, and we have Wilma Flintstone, our tomahawk ribeyes, and we're going to be grilling up here. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and quickly just say Louis Arrow Meats, Great Butcher and GR, thank you so much for uh, hooking this up. These look amazing. So, without further ado, we got to get these things going because they take quite a while to get grilling, okay? First thing we're going to do is talk about the seasoning. You know I love our rubs. I use them all the time, all right? But for this, we're just going to keep it simple, okay, right? Like she used to say, the military kiss, keep it simple, stupid sometimes. I'm definitely stupid. So we're just going to use some salt and pepper, all right? First thing we're going to do, just a little bit of olive oil. Just going to rub that in really nice. Oh, my God. Look at that freaking steak. Dude, I know. <laughs> Generous <laughs> amount of kosher salt. Guys, it's got to be kosher salt. Generous amount. What's the reason for the kosher salt there? The reason for the kosher salt is nice big flakes. Um, we just we don't use iodized salt either table salt because it's just so concentrated. Table, uh, kosher salt, even though it looks like it might be more aggressive, is actually not in nature whatsoever. All right, and we want to make sure that we're seasoning this. Look at how much meat that is. You might think you're putting a lot of salt on there, but I promise you, okay, I promise you that you're not. Just got to penetrate all this meat. Nice generous amounts. So we can see I'm not being shy. We're outside, so it's nice and windy today pepper and on this one okay this is what we're going to do with this guy we're just going to straight grill it we're going to do these a couple different ways today okay so this one's ready for the grill and let's talk about this one we're going to sear this one then we're going to finish it in the silver back okay now is there any difference in like the makeup of these steaks are they basically the same they are absolutely the same okay absolutely the same all right for this one though we're not going to use any um any oil because we're going to put oil down on our primate okay so Got just it. generous amounts of salt and pepper also very, very, very important. If you're gonna spend the money on a steak like this, and I promise you they're not cheap, right? This is a treat for us too. Please let it come to room temperature first. I've had these out for about two hours, and don't be afraid to let it sit out that long, okay? There is something called a food danger zone. At ambient room temperature, which is the temperature inside your house, your kitchen on the counter, you got four hours that food can sit out before you really have to start worrying about it. So letting it sit out for a couple hours isn't going to hurt anything. It's going to ensure that these cook a lot more evenly and give you a better product in the end. We want to make sure we spare no spe uh, steps in the process when we have such a beautiful piece of meat in front of us, all right? Again, lots of kosher salt. How thick is that thing? That's two inches thick. I have a joke in my mind right now. Yeah, I'm going to right keep there. this one to myself. Yep, me too. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. So we're going to start with our sear. Want to come over with me, Dominic? Guys, with a nice six, 700 degree uh, grill here. Using the Primate's uh, two-thirds griddle and the, uh, uh, the uh, grill grate in there today That's as well. That's it. There it goes. That's what I'm talking about. That now these is flames here are exactly cool, right? what I'm talking about. We want to see this nice and hard. Look how beautiful that's going to be. Now we want those flames. Oh yeah, like we that? want them here. Awesome. Absolutely, it's not hurting anything. It's just all that beautiful fat already starting to render out that high heat. Those flames are fine. I right, just go ahead and turn it over. See that nice sear that we're getting here? Wow. Don't be afraid of this color, guys. That's exactly what we want. We want to sear in all these juices before we throw this over here on the silverback. All right. That's exactly what we want to have happen. Now, while this is finishing on that side, I'm going to go ahead and just place our other one. This might be Wilma. We're going to place her right there. We're just going to grill her like normal, okay? Turn this up a little bit. Let's have a look and see how we're doing. Perfectly seared, guys. Look at that beautiful color, that beautiful char. Don't be afraid of that. That is exactly, exactly, exactly what we want. All right, in we go. So what was that, like 60 seconds on either about side? About a minute, about a minute on each side for sure. This guy's, you want it really high heat. I have it right now at about 440 to 450 degrees. It's gonna take about 18 to 20 minutes to a rare, rest it out to about a medium rare, okay? Now the only reason we're going so hot on the silverback is because that steak is so freaking big, That's right? exactly right. Okay. That is exactly right. And it's gonna be just fine. We're out here to watch it, it's gonna be cool. This one we're just gonna grill off like normal, all right? And we're just gonna kinda keep keep monitoring that as we go. So what's the difference between searing it on that cast iron and searing it on the grates? Well, if you can sear it on, you're gonna get, well, you can sear it on here for sure. There's okay. no question. But if you sear it on this cast iron, 
just that even temperature right across. You see the whole whole surface of that just comes right down on an even heat surface. Sometimes on the grates it can be a little bit dicey. If you really want to sear something hardcore, let's go right there. All right, this, so sear, we're gonna finish it here, a little live action style on the on the silverback. Then this, we'll just grill it like you would any time uh, in your backyard. Awesome. All right, guys, so I'm going to put this away. I have to bear with me as I kind of just continue to babysit Wilma over here. But let's talk about a couple cool things coming up in May. And then we're going to get started on some mac and cheese that we're doing today. The real star of the show are these steaks. So we're just going to do a simple mac and cheese and talk about that. May is a very exciting month. I am super, super excited. We have so many cool things going on. Starting off today with these tomahawk steaks. I am super excited about that. Next week we're going to be doing some cool beer can chicken with some Michigan asparagus and we're going to pair a local beer with that. Uh, today we're going to be pairing a local wine from Hickory Creek Winery. I have a lot to say about them later, but that's what we're going to be having to drink today. Uh, a couple other kind of cool things for Memorial Day, guys. It's the last Friday of the month, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to have just kind of a cookout around here. We're just going to hang out. We're not going to do anything crazy on the grill. Do some burgers, some barbecue chicken, maybe some hot dogs. What I need from Grill Grills Nation for our end of the month contest, if you can send me your favorite side dish that you have at a picnic like you would at Memorial Day, I'd really, really appreciate it. I'll use that recipe, we'll give you a credit, we'll get you that prize just like always. It's just gonna be a fun kind of grill out here for staff and friends and we'd love you to be a part of it with us with uh, some of your favorite sides. Also, really cool from, uh, from us here, from today moving for the foreseeable future, if you buy a grill, you get 15% off select um, accoutrement, as it was, all of our accessories and all the fun stuff that makes it so much fun to hang out and grill. 15% off of that. Check out our website for specifics, but that is a really, really cool deal. Last but not least, and then down to business, real quick, just going to check on my friend over here. She's doing just fine. All right, just got to be nice and patient with this, and don't worry about that nice crust on the outside because that is exactly what we want. Just got to kind of roll with it, all right? So the last thing we're going to do is, if you can guess the total weight of both of those behemoth steaks, Fred and Wilma Funstone over there, we're going to give you something really cool from Hickory Creek, okay? Get that in by midnight tonight. We'll let you know first of the week, and we'll get that out to you. So, again, weight of both of those steaks before they're cooked, closest one by midnight tonight. We'll get you something real cool from Hickory Creek's uh, from Hickory Creek, and you're going to really enjoy that. All right, let's make some mac and cheese. First thing we got to do is turn this on. Where's the craft box? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that. I absolutely knew it. All right, guys, while this is cranking up, I just want to kind of talk about, uh, about what we're doing. We have actually, I know we're just making a simple mac and cheese, but believe it or not, even if you've done this at home, you're actually kind of, uh, you're doing a lot of French cooking, which is my kind of forte. It's what I studied in school, and I absolutely love it. I'm going to give this guy a quick turn real quick. There we go. Check out our progress. Yeah, we're doing just fine. Look how beautiful that is right uh, there. That's awesome. Dude, that steak's no joke, man. I don't know what I'm going to do. Eat I don't it? know if I can wait. I don't know if I can wait for it to come off the grill. Yeah, chew it raw. That sounds good. <laughs> right. There we go. All right, cool, guys. <laughs> Sorry, I got carried away. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a little bit of butter, if it'll come out. There we go. All right, I'm going to melt that. Oh, this will turn on. So this is Drew's from scratch mac and cheese. This is Drew's from scratch mac and cheese with uh, a little bit of help from our, our friends, Alveda. <laughs> <laughs> we're not too classy around these parts, eh? Hang a minute. All right, so we're going to melt about two tablespoons of butter in our pan here, all right? And then what we're going to do is incorporate some flour. Believe it or not, I know all of you know this out there, but just so we can kind of base this for things, we just made a roux. Once we incorporate butter and flour, we made a roux, all right? And the roux is a basis for so many, so many things. Um, growing up in the South, gosh knows, uh, we made, uh, we thickened everything with the roux, uh, especially in parts of Louisiana and Southern Alabama where kind of French and Cajun uh, food is so prevalent. Um, so we're gonna melt our butter here, two tablespoons. We always wanna go equal parts of fat to flour. So if I have two tablespoons of butter, I need two tablespoons of flour. Okay, we're gonna put that right in there. You have different types of roux, depending on how long you cook it. You can have a blonde roux, a dark roux, depending on what kind of stock it's going to, or depending on what you're going to use it with. <clears throat> My favorite kind of roux, the one that I'm best at making, is the burned roux. <laughs> right. Actually, you know what's funny about that? When you're actually making a roux, you have to burn it to get it to come back to brown. 
What? If you're making a brown roux, you have to actually burn it to bring it back. It's to burn and then come back down. I promise you. Believe it or not, it will unburn itself. So I'm just secretly better than I ever knew. You're secretly the man. You just didn't <laughs> know this. All right, guys. So we have our flour and our butter, and we're making our roux, okay, ready to go. Now, first step. So we have a roux. Next cool thing. We're going to incorporate about a cup and a half of half and half here. I'm going to stir that in and whisk it until it gets nice and thick. That looks really cool. And now what do we have? We went from a roux, so that's the first step of this. Now what we're doing is we're making a French mother sauce called a bechamel. There are five French mother sauces. This is one of them. Okay. If you think about a bechamel, you're thinking about, let's say, what happens when you add sausage to a bechamel? You have sausage gravy for your biscuits and gravy. Oh, really? That's why it's called a mother sauce. You add, you pound it is. When we put our cheese in here, we're going to go from a bechamel to what's called a Mornay sauce. That's the base for macaroni and cheese. So that's our third step. We have our roux, we have our bechamel, and we have our Mornay sauce. So okay? just a lot of French fancy words for mixing three things together. For macaroni and cheese. I like it. Don't you? <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that crazy? So we're just going to stir this, guys, until it gets nice and thick. Okay? Monitoring my steak over there. And actually, while that kind of thickens up, you can see right there. I'm just going to turn the heat up a little bit for us. Check it out. Oh, yeah, baby. <laughs> Getting the diamonds? Oh, oh, oh we're, whoo, I'm excited. <laughs> All right, sorry, guys. All right. So the other uh, French, let's see if I can remember this from culinary school. So you've got your bechamel, you've got your hollandaise, you've got your velouté. You've got your Espanol and your basic tomato sauce. Five mother sauces. I have not thought of that in years. I still got it. My professors would be so proud of me right now. Well, and, and nobody can check you right now. So even if they just made up all five <laughs> of those words, we're going to believe you. I <laughs> love it. All right, guys. So we're coming in here. Thanks, Dominic. I was feeling so good about myself, too. I'm going to go home and cry now. All right. So this is about the thickness that we want. All right. Just nice and a little kind of viscous right there. A little bit more thick than milk. Exactly. Yep. It's done its job. We didn't, really, we didn't make a whole lot of roux as, as far as the amount of cream that we used. We didn't want to. The, cream, the milk was going to do the rest, or the cheese is going to do the rest. So let's go ahead and start adding this. And this is, guys, just straight Velveeta. You can use anything that you want. I just like this because it gets super creamy and it melts really quick. Um, and we just stir that in and lightly incorporate it until it gets literally nice and creamy. Something I like to do, too, is just this stuff is so... <laughs> Stuff is so uh, gnarly that it's completely fine at room temperature, so I don't like to do this cold. You know what I mean? Just kind of stir that in there. So, then, like, how much cheese are you using? For so, this? this is three quarters of a pound. So, three quarters of a small brick of uh, Velveeta. Got it. The smallest that it comes, I think, is a pound block, and this is three quarters of that. Got so, it. Okay. Uh, and it's all in the recipe that I gave you guys. And that, especially for this mac and cheese, that is a very, very, very kind of loose interpretation of of what we're doing but uh you can see this thick and not really yeah nice, it's already so. getting real thick i'm gonna take that heat down just a little bit and this is why we didn't want to make too much of that roux because this is really going to turn into a pretty creamy thick sauce and it just takes a minute we just got to sit here and kind of kind of fool around with it well i mean it's the perfect thing to do while we're waiting for those steaks to. yeah i up. know it's, uh, we really can't rush the steaks so i figured we would do something today that just kind of something easy to do i mean if you don't have you don't feel like making these steaks this is awesome mac and cheese i eat mac and cheese for just a straight up meal all the time anyway so oh yeah now is that like are you ruining the rules if you add stuff to this no absolutely not matter of fact i got the mexican version of this it's got jalapenos in there sometimes i like to throw some tomatoes on the top something i really like to do ma'am is i like to take some uh, like fresh arugula because arugula will kind of wilt in that heat and it's super peppery. Just mm -hmm. throw that in there and kind of stir it in the very end. Kind of gives a little bit of texture, some extra pepper to it. That's a really, really good idea. Sweet. And then, like Mark would do, just add six pounds of bacon. Six pounds of go. bacon. Actually, it's Mark's more like 12 pounds of bacon. But you, can <laughs> always, you can always add some bacon. Or actually, man, if you had some of that pork belly like we made not too long ago, you oh, could throw yeah. that in here. That would be awesome. I mean, really, sky's the limit. This is really looking nice now. Right? It's getting nice and thick. We just want to kind of maintain a constant stir on it, though. This will burn really this'll easy. This will burn real quick, like. And also, something important to mention, guys, I've got a metal pot here. I'm using a, uh, a rubber whisk. That's so we're not scratching the bottom of the pan. That's so we're not putting any uh, medical particles. We don't want any medical, medical, metal particles in our, uh, ooh, that's gross, medical bugs, in our, uh, in our mac and cheese. So just food for thought. Let that kind of do its thing. I'm going to go check on, uh, on Wilma over here. Let's have a look and see how we're doing. Oh, yeah. 
I think she's gonna be great. Look at that. <laughs> Tell me I still got it, baby. I've never seen a steak that you have to worry about the gigantic bone sticking out of the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Barely fits on the grill. That is awesome. Right? And that's not because the grill is small. That grill is no, enormous. That, grill, that steak no, it's is just huge. Not small. <laughs> All right, guys, so we're just kind of doing this. We put the rest of this cheese in there. As you can see, I had to go ahead and change utensils because I dropped the whisk inside the mac and cheese. It's not mac and cheese unless you come out with something like that. All right, guys. At least you didn't cut yourself again. Yeah, that's true. So when we were going over what we were going to do this week, Dominic was like, I want you to make something we had to cut the least amount of stuff possible. So I only had to cut the steaks when they're done grilling, so I'm trying to do my best to accommodate. You sure you don't want me to do that? <laughs> not if you want. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, I'm just going to close the lid on this. Get a nice little char on that back end. And here we are. I think that's everything. We're just going to keep stirring it and stirring it until right everything just kind of melts in there. Now, for the pasta, I call for two cups of pasta uh, to incorporate here. It doesn't matter what kind of pasta you use. I don't even know what kind of pasta that is. Does this look cool to me this morning? When Those, I got are it? Those are squiggly boys. Those are squiggly boys. Cavatappi. <laughs> so I was like, I don't know. That looks like that would make some cool mac and cheese. <laughs> so that's what I got it. So uh, again, doesn't matter what kind. I call for two cups. I made three here because I wasn't sure exactly how much of this sauce we we're going to end up with, but um, doesn't really matter. This is not uh, kind of crazy science. So is there any like uh, common mistakes people make when they're making mac and cheese at home? Anything that uh, you know? this is not going to add as much to your meal as you think it's going to. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing is you can you can definitely burn your roof. Don't get me wrong. Uh, if you just don't stir it too, like the reason I'm just standing here and kind of stirring this a lot is because it gets really, that roux and that flour start to interact together. And with that cheese, especially if you're using processed cheese like this, and you just don't want it to stick to the bottom and burn. That's a common one. Um, something you could do with this as well, you could make this, Combine everything together, put it in the oven dish pans, put some sprinkles, or excuse me, some uh, breadcrumbs on the top. Mm -hmm. You can finish that and you have a little bit more cheese on the top, maybe. Yeah, this toss is more it just on the like grill a, and smoke that thing. You could totally could. Matter of fact, that'd be perfect. You totally could. And you can make this, matter of fact, if you have people coming over, you want to make this a day ahead, go ahead and get in the container ready to go. Put your breadcrumbs on, stick it in the fridge right overnight. Wake up the next day, you got people coming over, 350 on one of our grills, pop it in there for about 30, 45 minutes, uncovered, you're good to go. Oh. Sounds so good. That's like grandma's mac and cheese. Heck yeah, that's what it is. All right, guys, we're getting there. Let's go ahead and incorporate. Let's turn this down to low. Let's get some of our pasta in here. We'll start with a couple of cups, see where we are. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. That looks delicious. That just thickened up so quickly. Yep. Oh, yeah. Start this in that pasta, start to kind of interact with everything. I'm going to put a little bit more cheese in there, and that's probably going to do it. Wow. So a little bit more uh, pasta in. Look at how quick and simple that was. I don't know what we did that in, but it wasn't very long. Yeah. Do you do any like uh, seasonings on this, or do you just yeah. kind of serve it as no, is? No, we're going to do a couple of things. Now, one thing you could do, I know we're not using it today. One thing I think it would be excellent, go ahead and cut this off. There we go. Today, we're just kind of sticking to the salt and pepper mantra. Oh, yeah. Um, sticking to the salt and pepper mantra, so we're just going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper, okay? You can be pretty generous with this. Do keep in mind that processed tea, cheese does tend to have a fair amount of sodium in it, so go kind of light. You don't have to use processed cheese. You can use anything. I just chose this for today. Just get a little bit of pepper in there. All right, we're just going to give this a nice stir. Incorporate everything. Isn't that like everybody's favorite sound right there? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. And then we had to go over here get this in a nice plate for everybody and then we're gonna have to go check out our friends on the grill that's the Dude, only I'm thing so i care about right now i know mac and cheese is good and all but let's be honest all right let's do this gonna get this in a nice little bowl here make it look nice and pretty for all you guys out there and grill the grills land throw it in here look how creamy that is it actually looks really good all right gonna go ahead and just get that last little goop in there oh yeah that's what I'm talking about. And then, if you want, you can totally take a little bit of dried herbs. I just happen to have some parsley here right over the top. Make it look nice and pretty. 
and there we go. 15 minute mac and cheese 15 from scratch. 15 minute mac and cheese from scratch right there, guys. Perfect with a steak like this too. You really want this steak to shine, okay? This is all about the steak. It's got nothing to do with us. We want the sides to be simple, some simple mashed potatoes. That's why I love going to steak houses. You go into a steak house, you're gonna get some type of potato, mac and cheese, maybe some Brussels sprouts, good wine. That's it, it's all about the steak. And we have some fantastic steaks here today. So let's see how we're doing over here. I wanna talk a little bit about what's going on. And one thing I don't want people to get afraid of, this color, people get so afraid of that. Don't, guys. This is the perfect char for the outside. This is what this steak needs, okay? This is exactly what it needs. Let's see how we're looking. We're still nice and rare in there, okay? Nice and rare. But remember, when we pull this off, guys, when we pull these steaks off, and we're going to pull them at rare, we're probably going to pull them in about three to four minutes, believe it or not. Whenever we pull a steak, we let it rest for 10 minutes because whatever and it not only brings those juices back inside, what it also does, guys, is it gives them an opportunity to, to redistribute, but it's going to take that cooking temperature up. So, so we pull it at rare like we're going to do. It's going to rest up to medium rare. If you want it medium, we pull it at medium rare, it rests up to medium and so forth and so up all the way up to that one temperature that we don't talk about here at Griddle Girls Land. <laughs> what do we do if they cook a steak well done? We ask them politely to leave. Yeah. Get out of my house. <laughs> Get out of my house. You are no longer welcome here. All right. That just looks incredible. This I is can't just fine. stop doing beauty shots of it. Okay. Now, I'm going to put this down for one minute. Okay. Let's see Let's the other get one. Over here. Let's have a look real quick at this guy. Coming along just fine. Whoa. Don't leave us open too long. That one's coming along actually a little bit quicker. All right. Now, Cool. One thing I want to talk to you guys about too real quick and then I'm going to pull these steaks off to rest. We're going to have a little bit of a conversation about this awesome wine over here from a great vineyard down in uh, southwestern Michigan. Uh, one thing that we're doing for Memorial Day that I mentioned is we're doing kind of like a friends and family kind of cookout around here. We're going to do those sides for you. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to kind of, <clears throat> if you're far away from Michigan, it's almost like you could be here with us uh, to celebrate the holiday. But we're also going to be partnering up with a really, really cool organization. Uh, we're going to be doing some really fun giveaways with them, a uh, veteran organization that I personally love and am a part of, and uh, we'll leave it at that. It's called A Hero if you guys want to check it out, A-H-E-R-O. They promote veterans, uh, kind of healing from various wounds, whether they're physical, psychological, and or both. Uh, and what they do is they take them out uh, for fully funded trips all across the U.S. They take them hunting and fishing so they can all be together, hang out, just kind of be with each other. Uh, and as a veteran myself, uh, that means a lot to me. And actually. The wines are about to jump into here in just a second. Uh, the owner of that, Adam, he's also a fellow veteran. He was a logistics officer in the Air Force, so uh, throw that out there as well. All right, man. Without further ado, I think it's time to yank some steaks. Oh, is that a euphemism? <laughs> yeah. All right, first things first, though. Let's see if I still got this. So, yeah, you're, you're doing your finger test, right? All right, I'm going to say, I'm going to say medium. Medium? No, no, no. Medium, rare to rare. Okay. See if I'm right. Perfect rare, 155 degrees. Boom. All right, off we go. Just silent steak shots. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> meat porn. <laughs> We're on the air, you remember that, right? All right, I'm gonna put these up here to rest, guys. I want these to be in full view while we are talking about some wines. Next one. Perfect. Boom. Done. Now, remember, you're not doing yourself any, any justice. If you're spending the money on these things, if you skip any step, these need to rest. If they can rest for longer than 10 minutes, I recommend it, but at least 10 minutes, okay? At least 10 minutes. We're going to let these hang out. This is ours off the grill. Get out. This is off the grill. This is what I got to deal with every day, people. So we got this one off the grill, and we have this one directly out of, uh, out of the silverback after the sear on the primate. All right. Macaroni and cheese done. Steak's done. Fun part. It's Friday. It's happy hour. 
time to do this thing. All right. Hickory Creek Winery is a place that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I used to do some work there for its former owner. His name was Mike. Uh, the guy that purchased it from him, Adam, wonderful, wonderful guy. Uh, he's just a really, really cool dude. And uh, I want to talk about the wines and why it means so much to me. I used to work here uh, when I came back from France. Let's go back. When I came back from France, I just graduated culinary school and I went to wine school. Actually, Adam and I had the exact same wine credential. We got it from uh, different locations, but it was graded by the same, uh, same kind of governing body from, uh, from London, England called the Wine, Spirits and Education Trust. So we hold that together. Uh, so I can tell you after tasting this juice, not only is Chef Drew, but as a documented wine professional, stuff is really, really, really good. You're trying so hard not to say the S word. I know, I really am. <laughs> I hate that word so much. I Drew love is a sommelier. <laughs> <laughs> I love the culture. I do not like, let's say, some parts about the culture. We'll leave it there. I just really <laughs> like wine. All right, I was, yes, thank you so much for that, Dominic. I had, I had, had, had it done, too, until you had to ruin it. Uh -huh. Totally rained on my parade. I have words for you, but they're not appropriate for, for the viewing audience. All like right. sommelier? Is that one that, of that's, That is worse than the F word for me, to be honest <laughs> with you. But all right, here we go. So when I came back from fans, I had a wonderful time out there on this vineyard. I worked there for about four months. I was their chef. I also worked in the cellar and out in the fields. When I came back, or I moved to Michigan from there, and I came to the Southwest, I worked for several wineries down on the wine trail down there, uh, more in the cellars than, than in the kitchen, believe it or not. And when I started tasting some of these wines, I was like, this stuff is just as good as some of the, some of the wines I was having in France. I was working in Bordeaux, which is like the mecca for, for wine. And so I just want to give the Southwest of Michigan a lot of credit for the, for the juice that they put out. It's really, really delicious. It's world class. This is one of the best ones, Hickory Creek. It's one of the smallest ones on the wine trail. But don't let that fool you, it's one of the best. Um, during the summer months, guys, all those vineyards down there, they do so many cool festivals, fun things. I recommend you getting down there if you're from a local area, please, please, please. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you caught us hauling a grill down there and throwing something on there and drinking some cool wine one day. I mean, that, that would not shock me in the least. Uh, but yeah, if you're from the local area, a couple, you know, hour, hour and a half away or however far you like to travel, it's a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon. Um, HickoryCreekWinery.com. Uh, if you have any questions about that, you can hit me up at Chef Drew at GulaGrills.com. I'll get you contact information. If not, you can go straight to their website, try some of their juice out. I promise you, it's 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 unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And so remember, it, whoever guesses closest to the weight of those steaks by the end of uh, the day today, they're getting a gift package from these guys. They're getting a gift package from Gula Grills and from Hickory Creek Winery, and it's going to be pretty pretty awesome. All right, we're going to open this thing up today. We're going to be let's talk about wine pairing. All right. So today I have several options here to choose from, uh, and we will be using these in future shoots, not to worry, but for this one, um, I'm gonna go with the straight up Cabernet. Classic, classic combination, Cabernet Sauvignon, steak like this, two peas in a pod. Uh, I'm not gonna think outside of the box here. So I know nothing about wine, so like, what is this wine? Tell me a little bit about it. So Cabernet is a very, uh, it's a very, it can be, if done correctly, uh, it's a very, Fruit forward wine can be a little bit more aggressive, very tannic, and by tannic I mean that the tannin comes from the skins of the grape and it takes a lot of time for, for those to relax and to kind of hang out. That's where the aging process comes in. But it can be kind of chewy on the uh, chewy mouthfeel. Uh, it, it's a very in your face kind of wine. It's exactly what something like this needs. In okay? your face wine with a big steak. With a big ass steak, you need a big <laughs> ass wine. So that's what we're gonna do today. All right, guys, uh, Hickory Creeks Cabernet. We're going to pour ourselves a glass and cheers up. And like I always say, when we're working out here with barbecue, I never use stemmed glasses because what happens? When we're out here working on meat and cooking everything and hands and we got tongs everywhere, I've knocked over so many glasses and I don't want to I don't want to ruin this awesome juice, so we're just going to go barbecue style. That's alcohol. Throw it right here. Hey, yeah, absolutely, man. Cheers. There we hey, go. yours is bigger than mine. I, I know it is. Cheers. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm like, I don't know what's going on with you today, man. Oh, it's so Dang, good. that's good. That's really good. Adam, if you're watching, great job as always, man. All right, guys. So let's do it. Let's just do it. It's time to cut. It's time to cut. I'm tired of working around. Which one do you want to do first? Your call. Uh, this one's off the grill. This one's out of the silver bag. Let's do the one off the grill first. Off the grill first. Here yep. we go. So hold on. Before you cut into this, is there like a special way you have yeah, to cut this? Totally I've never is. seen something like this Totally. Before. So as we can see, we have grains with the meat. They're running this way. Okay? They're running this way from my, from my right to left. Okay? We want to cut against those grains. All right? 
So if the grain's run this way, we want to cut this way. Do you right? need to cut it off the bone first? Or nah, do you leave no, it there? we're not. We're going to leave that bone right on there. All right, guys, here we go. Let's see if I nailed it. Oh, yeah, we nailed it. Look at that beautiful rare. <laughs> Can't tell me that's not pretty. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There we go. Big old chunks. Big old chunks right in there. Look at that. Just kind of fish it around the side. Hold on. You want to make sure you get all of it. Better get all of it. I know, right? I'm Look. chewing on that bone later. <laughs> all right. There we go. There it is. Make it nice and fancy. We'll just toss that right up there like that. Looks pretty awesome to me. All right, guys. That's the first one. Nice and rare. This one is off the grill. 10 minute rest, about a 15 to 18 minute cook time. This one we seared on the primate, then we threw in about a 440 to 450 degree silverback for the same amount of time, about 15 to 18 minutes. So we're gonna cut it the exact same way. But the grain's smell running this is way. It's just ridiculous. We're gonna cut against the grain. You can see, this is why we wanna let it rest, let everything kind of come back up, see a little bit of the blood here. But if we were to just cut into this directly after we pulled it off the the silverback, all those juices are going to go everywhere and you just you just ruin the steak. So, got to give it some time. All right, here we go. Let's see how we did on this one. Beautiful. Beautiful. Got a more of a medium rare on this one. Look at that. That looks gorgeous. Yep. Excellent kind of way to learn here, too. Definitely rare here. Medium rare here. Same amount of cook time, two different methods, okay? And that's very, very normal. It's actually perfect. If you have guests over, a lot of times when I have guests over, I like to do a really rare one, a medium rare one, and even sometimes a medium one, depending on how many people I'm having, because you never know what people are going to like. This would be really good if you're entertaining people. Mm -hmm. All right. That's actually a perfect piece of steak right there. Look mm -hmm. at that. All right. And then also something else to point out, and then I'll be quiet because this is more important than I am. If you notice when we're starting to cut, we started out here, right? perfect medium rare medium rare medium rare as we get closer to that bone we're starting to get a little bit more rare do you see that mm -hmm. this is the case in anything that you're cooking just something to keep in mind there we go and that last piece off the bone essentially is rare right there just a little bit of fat but is rare put it down here we'll rest this bad boy up here and there we have it guys it's been fantastic hanging out with you today uh, I can't wait to jump into this. I really wish all you guys were here to eat it with me. Uh, but do this at home. People in uh, our local area, again, if you have any questions about where to find one of these, hit me up, Chef Drew at GrillGrills.com. Start sending me in those sides you want to see us make for Memorial Day. Guys at Hickory Creek, thank you. Guys at Lewis Earl, thank you. As always, like, share, subscribe, own the smoke. Have a safe weekend. We love you, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, everybody.